All right. Hi, John Sudol here. Hope all is well. Um, I was supposed to be going live right now, but for some reason, um, I couldn't get out. Uh, Facebook uh, just wouldn't let me just sign in. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to do a little quick um, uh, broadcast here and record it, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it up on Facebook and YouTube in, in a little bit. For those of you who don't know me, I am the founder of the John Sudo Acting Studio, as well as the Emotion Training Center. And these short little videos that I'm putting up and these live sessions are all about introducing you to the science of emotion and then how you can apply that science to enhance your artistic expression. Right? So uh, before we get started on that, uh, just a few things. One, uh, since it's gonna be on Facebook, YouTube, um, if you like what I have to say, I really would appreciate you know, doing the like thing as well as more importantly, if you got a comment, I would love to hear your thoughts. Leave the, it in the comments section. Um, so any, any thoughts you have about that? If you want to uh, uh, be notified sooner, if you're on YouTube, uh, hit the subscribe button. And if you're on Facebook, do a like, like my page here so I can let you know when I am going live. I'm going to try to do these at least once a week. And I really think it's really important for everyone to understand, for every actor, especially, to understand the science of emotions. And not just approach our work from a hit or miss or hope and wishing. So here I'm, I'm going to narrow our audience down right now, people who are listening. People who I think will get the most benefit out, out of this are, if you are struggling with your emotional, verbal, or nonverbal communication, Meaning you, it's it's oftentimes difficult for you to get your message facial, facially across the way you intend. If you've been told that your acting oftentimes is too big, your expression is too big, or it's too small, nobody knows what you're feeling, or if you are, you know, having trouble taking a headshot that really says who you are, because every headshot seems to look the same. Um, any one of those challenges, if you have that. Um, then you are you are the you're the person I want to be talking to, because it all the uh, you know thinking that you're doing something wrong, thinking that um, all you have to do is be more honest, more truthful, and that's going to give you the answer. For some, maybe that's, that's that could be you know the push you need to being clear about our communication, but the science tells us that is not the answer. Just being more honest is not the answer in our communication. That the truth of it is that there's been over 50 studies that says, you know, only a minority of people actually express what they feel the way they feel. So that's in our everyday life. So it becomes more of a challenge when uh, we are trying to take the imaginary life and have it appear as though it is real. So if you are any one of those, if you have any one of those challenges that I just talked about, then you're in the right place in, in this very, for this session we're going to be working on right now, understanding the, the power of the universal emotions is something I think you're really going to like. So if we want to be able to express outwards, we want to take what you're feeling in here and bring it out here, you have to know what, what's it look like if I get it out there? And is it, will people recognize it? You know, when you see good acting, right? You recognize it. There's not. There's nothing on there that you don't get. You just wonder how they got it the way they did. And I'm going to show you one of the the pathways to to that, to expressing what you feel the way you feel. And it's not about taking away your creativity. It's about enhancing it because once you know the science behind it and know how to apply it, boom, you're gonna forget about it. It's like learning your scales. Once you learn that, you're not playing your scales, but you learn. You put the time in. Does that make sense? So what we're going to look at today is the seven universal emotions. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what makes them universal. And then I'm also going to um, show you how the, way, the three ways we express, which is micro, macro, and subtle. Okay, so all quickly, I'm going to try and do this in a quick um, you know, five, six, seven minutes. All right, so what I just want, one of the reasons I want to go, uh, I might have been having trouble getting on uh, Facebook and YouTube is because I wanted to um, be able to show you my screen and 
it's kind of hard to do that going live on Facebook. Uh, all right, so here's what, here's what the science knows. You notice that there are specific emotions that are universal. In fact, there's seven of them. There is anger, happy, sad, surprise, fear, contempt, and disgust. And based on the lead, one of the leading top research in the field of emotions, Dr. Paul Ekman, these emotions, as he, he's put it, are recognizable almost about anywhere on the planet, right? That people will recognize. Now, if you look at them, is there any emotion that you don't recognize? And um, I'm guessing no. But you're also probably saying, oh, they look really, really big. Well, yeah, because these are what are called macro expressions. Macro expressions means there's no reason for me to hide what I'm feeling. There are also these, these uh, photos are done with the intention to show you what the emotion looks like. So you're seeing it kind of out of context. So that keeping that in mind that any of uh, these, these seven emotions are universal because of certain things. They're universal because they have specific muscle groups or muscle patterns on the face that belong to that emotion, that emotion only. So let me tell you, see what that looks like. You can see how that the, these muscle groups are unique to this emotion, this emotion only. You're not gonna find the muscle groups of disgust in fear. And that's why we know when someone's disgusted with us as opposed to being you know, worried about something, right? So these, uh, what we found people, anywhere on the planet, people may get confused on something, but I think they get confused in the interpretation of the emotion, not the emotion itself. And what I've learned is that there are people who understand, I can look at that emotion and go, oh, that looks like fear, or that looks like disgust. And somebody else said, ah, it looks like somebody just stole his lunch. So they are interpreting the facial expression where somebody is naming it. So it's better to name it because this way you know the path of where you're going to in order to achieve it. Now, what's important and what's going to help you to either nail the reaction or take a headshot um, is this is that every recognizable emotional facial expression will be a piece of meaning just maybe one muscle group uh, a, a, com a part of a combination of meaning it might have two um, a mouth and brows uh, that come together to make an expression or it's a combination of, of one muscle group from one emotion and and from another every recognizable emotion emotional expression will be a piece of a, a combination of or a, co uh, a blend of these seven universal emotions when you think of these emotions like the primary colors you can see how we can build and when we add levels of intensity, we get the shades of that emotion. So the first thing that makes them universal is the muscle groups and muscle patterns. The second thing that makes them universal is the sensations that are produced when we are experiencing the emotion. So the feeling of happy feels different than the feeling of anger or feeling of fear. There's certain changes that are happening in our body and these changes are preparing us to take action, which is the third part of the universality, is the impulses, right? So we have, uh, we have universal about universality of triggers. It means that there are specific things that, will, uh, that we're hardwired that will produce these emotions, and there's other ones that are learned. There's also the universality of the muscle groups and the impulses and the sensations. Now, I want to get real quick here. I forgot that I had this anger here. You can see it in the closer. You see the three muscle groups. There may be another one that head kind of tilts forward. These muscle groups are in the emotion of anger. However, you don't need to have all three muscle groups. But I, here's what I want you to think about. When you understand that these, there's three, these three muscle groups that belong to anger, the more muscle groups that come in, the more intense the expression. So therefore, the less muscle groups, the more muscle groups you take away from this emotion, the less intense the expression. But just because you're taking away doesn't, uh, the expression doesn't mean that you're feeling less. It means that you modified. However, um, because we can't take a look inside, 
if, if the inner intensity isn't growing uh, to where you want it to go, you won't have the impulse or the thoughts connected to that emotion. That makes sense. All right, so um, give you an example. This is two of the three expressions. As I said, the way we express macro, micro, and subtle. And right now I want to quick, take a quick look at the macro and the subtle for you, all right? So all that means is macro, I'm, I'm expressing what I feel the way I feel to the intensity. I'm read, there's no reason for me to hide. It. Most of the time, you'll be using all the muscle groups in that emotion. Think of a car coming at you, you go, Ree! and as you're about to get hit, you have no control over that. This is when we're feeling it, and there's no reason to hide it. We're not distorting in any way. So there's the three muscles. But you look at this subtle version. Can you still see the anger in it? Right? If you can, you know, write it down. Yeah, I can see the anger. But where are you seeing it? So we look at the same, uh, as remember we said the anger, the brows are pulled down. We see those vertical lines. We see there's tension in the lower or upper lid. And this next section, I have the tension in the upper lid, and he has the more tension in the lower lid. However, both are have a harder stare, and both are locked on. And there's tension, although his tension in his mouth is much more pronounced. Mine's less. Nonetheless, it's still there. So, well, as you can see, I'm not, you know, even though I'm engaging almost all, all the muscle groups only a little bit. That's what makes the emotion subtle. And when you think of the macro, anger, but then within that anger is a whole family of emotions, irritation, annoyance, disappointment. So if you know the muscle groups of anger, you're also going to know all those lesser intensity. You're just not bringing in all the muscle groups. So you can see macro to subtle. There's the anger again. Now look at the contempt. Even if you're just looking at the mouth, boom, subtle, fear. Can you see the worry? Even though it's not as big and the disgust. Mine is more like a disdain. And there is a subtle version of sad and a subtle version of surprise and of happy. So once you learned the, the seven universals, you learn the muscle groups. That's the science. That's what we know. We know that there's certain things that evoke an emotional response. We know that it feels a certain way. We know that it looks a certain way. Why do you need to know that? Because if you don't know what you're feeling, you don't know what you want to do with what you feel. You don't know uh, the what is making you feel that you're at a loss. You're going to miss the trigger or you don't know. Did I start too late? Did I start too soon? What am I really feeling? So understanding, when you understand the triggers, you know what's making you emotional. When you understand the sensations, you know where you are in the in inner intensity of the emotion. When you know the impulses, you know what you want to do. And for whatever reason, you got to hold back. And when you know the expressions, you know what's being, the muscle groups, you know what's being, uh, brought, you know what the viewer is seeing. All right, I hope that was helpful. Uh, once again, uh, if you like what I had to say, leave a comment, do the like button, subscribe. I'm going to be, uh, if, uh, hopefully I'm gonna, um, when you see this, there's going to be a link for another event I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be talking about iTalk the science behind eye language and that's going to be a quick little uh that's going to be a little bit longer maybe about an hour so um if this was helpful let me know uh and i will look forward to talking to you soon let me just get out of here and stop and so i look forward to seeing you at the next session now every session after this is going to include that science i'm going to get more and more into detail with it but it will include that science, and we're going to see how that science helps us to define the inner and outer truth, and how that science is going to help us interpret the reaction and how to come up with the appropriate facial expression. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out of our understanding of this science. All right. I hope you have a, a wonderful time. I will talk to you soon.